One question I get asked a lot about Cataclysm Classic is what's going to be the best raiding professions? Well, there's quite a few things to actually take into consideration before you decide on what professions you're actually going to settle on. Because actually, your best professions are going to change throughout the phases. Some professions are stronger than others early on, and that exact same profession that's stronger in phase one, when we get to the last phase, will actually be weaker than everything else. The really good thing about Cataclysm professions, though, is they're all incredibly close, because really, as an average, they all give 80 of a primary stat each, or 120 stamina. So that would be 80 strength, 80 agility, or 80 intellect, or 120 stam. Also, you have to bear in mind that even your gathering professions now do bring a bonus. So I'll use mining as an example because it really is the best example to give. If you're a tank, there's absolutely no reason not to have mining and then pair any mining related profession with it, which will make more sense in a minute. Engineering though, because of the big one minute cooldown, giving 480 intellect, agility or strength, basically whichever stat is most useful for you, is still going to make engineering pretty much best for everyone. But there is one small caveat. If you have a used trinket like the Ancient Petrified Seed, which on use gives 1,277 agility for 15 seconds, you'll see it's got a one minute cooldown, and so has the gloves. Now the on use on the gloves will share a cooldown with the trinket, so you can't have both up at the same time, but you can obviously chain them back to back. So if I use my gloves, it instantly puts the trinket on cooldown for 10 seconds while the gloves are actually on, and as soon as the gloves drop off, then I'll be able to use the trinket. Now, this may not seem like a big deal, but obviously the good thing about using the engineering gloves is stacking everything all at once for that big burst, maybe during lust at the start of a fight. So engineering is definitely stronger with two equip trinkets rather than a used trinket. But quite honestly, some of the really big trinkets are equip trinkets anyway. So it's only going to be a minor inconvenience at certain points of the game where maybe you've had to replace an equip trinket with a used trinket because it's just so much stronger. So as I say, for engineering, that is just one thing worth bearing in mind. Before we get into all of these professions and what you should definitely be using, if you haven't already got the Rested XP Guide pre-order for Cataclysm, the link's in the description below and the pinned comment. Of course, as always, it's an affiliate link, so any guide you buy does go towards supporting the channel. But what you need to remember is, if you're currently using the Wrath of the Lich King version, then obviously the 1 to 60 portion won't work because all the quests change completely and... You're going to want the 80 to 85 portion anyway because it just makes life a lot quicker so anyway of course engineering is going to be super strong and because of the fact that it's just a huge amount of strength agility or intellect right off the rip you're going to get more value out of this under bloodlust and with other cooldowns procced all of the tinkers have now changed as well so nitro boost for example which at the moment in wrath of the lich king goes on your boots it now goes on your belt instead but it no longer gives the crit and the same is true for all tinkers. So, for example, the parachute tinker on the cloak that currently gives either agility or spell power no longer gives that. But the good thing is you can have a regular enchant on it at the same time. So no longer do you need to choose between the parachute cloak or an enchant. You can just have both. Now, there's lots of new tinkers as well, which are unlocked actually just by crafting. So you do discover new recipes as you go along. But some of the bigger ones would be things like Nitro Boosts or Grounded Plasma Shield, which you can put on your belt, which absorbs some damage. Now, all of these can backfire. The only good thing about the Nitro Boots when they backfire now is it no longer fires you up in the air. Instead, it puts a dot on you for 80% of your maximum health. So if you was low on health when you used it and they backfire, you could die. But then something like a DK could AMS it or Cloak of Shadows for a Rogue. You know, there's ways to get rid of the dot outside of just being healed. Now, outside of all of the obvious tinkers that are going to be really strong and loot a rang, which means you can actually loot at range, which is really cool, you will be able to get a very early 359 head. So this is normal raid gear. So you're going to be going into raid straight away with a really strong headpiece. Cogwheels are introduced in Cataclysm as well, where you just get the choice of putting anything that you want into your head. So for example, if you have big benefits from crit and mastery, you can put crit and mastery cogwheels into your head. So you're in full control over what stats you're going to have if you're an engineer in your headpiece. Now to get the cogwheels, it's pretty simple. There's a vendor that you can trade in certain engineering related items and in return, you'll get a cogwheel. Of course, you'll still have the normal engineering items that you're used to like mobile mailboxes or north end teleporters. So overall, you can see engineering is pretty much, I would say, going to be best for every single DPS. Maybe not every single tank because the main reason as a tank you would use it in Wrath of the Lich King was definitely for the nitro boots over all else. 
And now they've got quite a high chance to foul. Maybe not that wise just going engineering for those. But you still do get a really nice big tanking tinker where it increases your armor by 1500 for 12 seconds. So there is still plenty of reason to go engineering as a tank. But overall, getting the glove tinker as DPS is going to be massive. Now, next, I want to talk about dual crafting because dual crafting goes through the same story as it has in Wrath of the Lich King, where actually in the early phases, it's strong. And in the late phases, it's not quite as strong because as epic gems are released later on in the game, you're going to have access to gems that give you 50 of a particular stat. So strength, agility, intellect versus the blue gems early on in the phases, which only give 40. So with dual crafting, you can have three Chimera Eyes, much like you could have three Dragon Eyes in Wrath of the Lich King, and each of them give 67 of a stat each. Other than if you was a tank, they give 101 stamina each. Now, the reason they give more stamina is because the regular blue stamina gems give 60. So each gem's worth 41 stamina each on top of what you would ordinarily be using. Now, pretty much every profession except for one for tanks, which we'll talk about in a second, will give 120 stamina almost on the dot. So as dual crafting, you would get an extra few stamina, but it's not really game breaking. But as I say, the thing is, as you get to using epic gems later on in the game, dual crafting actually becomes one of the weakest professions because it just doesn't give as much raw stats as every other profession. Whereas comparing it to blacksmithing, that goes through the opposite story. So you're still going to get two extra sockets like you do in Wrath of the Lich King on your gloves and your braces, but you're only going to get 40 of each stat in each slot. Or of course, 60 in each if you're going for stamina. Whereas when the epic gems become available, now blacksmithing is actually more powerful because you can use two epic gems instead of two normal gems. Of course, all of these professions can craft epic stuff, but the good thing about Cataclysm is the epics are BOEs. So there's no specific bind on pickup items that require blacksmithing to use. You can literally get the materials, give them to a guildie who is blacksmithing or even an alt, and obviously get whatever you need there. So where engineering you have to be engineering for the head blacksmithing tailoring and even level working you can just go and buy the stuff off of the auction house the final one i want to talk about is tailoring because quite honestly i think tailoring and engineering paired together are going to be the best professions for every single dps tailoring's got the same sort of proc on as you know in wrath of the lich king where it can increase your intellect by 580 for 15 seconds your attack power by a thousand for 15 seconds or your spirit by 580 for 15 seconds. So having the engineering gloves that you're going to pop, your engineering trinkets and even your weapon is procking on the pool, and then so is your cloak, either giving you that massive amount of intellect or that huge amount of attack power. With such a short internal cooldown, so it's almost procking every time your trinkets do, it's really, really strong. Again, all of these professions come with bonuses like the fact that you can craft epic gear, but even the tailoring ones, like I said before, they're all BOE, so you can just go to the auction house and buy them anyway. Now, there are some honorable mentions like inscription. If you're not going to have an alt that is inscription, having it on your main can be really good, especially at the start, because the big shoulder enchant sits behind a reputation, which is Therazane. And whilst it's not a terribly hard grind, then it probably won't take you very long to get the epic shoulder enchant until you do get exalted with Therazane. The inscription enchant is actually going to give more bonus stats than any of the other professions. But then obviously it will diminish as soon as you get the exalted Ferrazane one back down to about 80 of a primary stat. Now for tanks, an interesting one would be leather working to the point where mining and leather working together could be really strong or even jewel crafting and leather working until the epic gems come out. Now level working gets a much bigger stamina bonus assuming there's no changes because actually there was no new enchant that comes from enchanting as a profession to increase stamina on braces but the biggest stamina enchant you can get is still the wrath of the lich king version so when you then compare it to the embossments and you're getting a whopping 195 stamina from the embossment specific to level working obviously the gain is massive because you would only have 40 stamina on your braces now you're getting like 155 just from being level working and as i said all the other professions would give an average of about 120. you shouldn't write off alchemy either because alchemy is a great way of making passive gold with true gold you're going to get a nice early trinket and to be quite honest i plan on going in with alchemy so i can make the trinket and use the trinket and the second that that trinket gets replaced i'll then be changing my profession to something else so if you're willing to swap professions around a little bit going in with alchemy to get the trinket going in with engineering to get the head and then, of course, you'll have access to archaeology where you could get a two handed sword or even a staff as a caster. You can get a ring as a caster, among other things from archaeology. Check my archaeology video out. 
you can have quite a few 359 pieces before you even think about the reputation items that you're going to get and ultimately other bits that you're going to get from heroic five mans getting your pre-raid bis sorted and then as soon as you replace the alchemy trinket drop alchemy pick up tailoring now your professions are sorted for the rest of the expansion that's personally what i'm doing i know that might be a little bit too much for some of you like changing your professions that early on in the expansion but we've got plenty of time to prepare for cataclysm so I've actually been getting all of my profession kits ready now. So all I need to worry about is obviously the actual cataclysm crafting reagents when the game's actually live. So to recap, I would say engineering tailoring for all DPS. I would say dual crafting and level working for all tanks. And then when the epic gems become available, feel free to swap dual crafting for blacksmithing. In fact, would probably be the better option. So level working blacksmithing, two extra epic gem slots. And quite honestly, for healers, you can do whatever you want. The good thing about going alchemy as a healer is the alchemy trinket actually gives a greater amount of mana return back from using mana potions, so that can be particularly strong. And you don't really need engineering or tailoring, in my opinion, so you could just go for more static bonuses from something like jewel crafting or blacksmithing. And that's it. I hope that sort of answered the what profession should you go. I mean, I know it was a lot of explanation around some professions and not so much on others, but... That's because some of them are just really clear cut. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. As I say, check the rest of the XP pinned comment and description or however I speak English. Apparently I struggle towards the end of a video and I'll see you on the next one.